Hi guys, Paul Pluto on the Paul Pluto channel. I'm doing paid review 20J24. This is for Mark in Canada. Before we do this review, I'm going to show you my wristwatch. I'm wearing a Patek Philippe 5296. This is the automatic Calatrava 38mm. It was dropped in Basel World this 2019. I don't know why they dropped it to bread and butter. Big size Calatrava. What are they going to replace? I don't understand. They dropped it. Okay. Hi Arch, here's my email, uh, Addy. I'll ask you in a couple days if there's any topic to hear your opinion on. By the way, I watched your 10 types of watches to avoid and have to disagree on one point. Watch case size. Yes, we went from 33 to 37, then Sylvester Stallone, Rocky and Arnold Schwartz started the big thing then watch sizes jumped to 44 and 50 good god freaking clocks i was part of that fad the point is fashion is starting to come back down to earth on watch sizes aka tudor black bay 58 is 39 mils i won't buy anything bigger than 38 now and i have an eight and a half eight plus inch wrist now you can get trousers Trousers back up Trousers back to above the waist. I'll be happy. I'll tell you I tell the kids pull your freaking pants up No one wants to see your underwear and good luck running away from the chaser with your pants down Yes, I drink coffee too. Please don't uh, Please don't see the 8 p.m. Watch site as it's not built yet. My regular gig is in the Col Col Abba Col C O L A B A website. Okay. Oh, it's just consulting. Keep up the good work. The world needs you to contribute your honest, honest, yes, honest stuff. This is Mark from 8 p.m. Watches and Colaba Consulting. I gotta say thank you, thank you, thank you. The size thing, yeah, it's interesting, you know. The size went up, and I think it is coming down a bit, but I don't think we're going to go back to small sizes. 80s and 90s, 80s and 90s, the size of wristwatches. Most men, it was 33. The Paddock, Paddock had the 3919, 3919 Calatrava, it was 33 mil. And Paddock at the time did not put sizes. They had a one-to-one -one photos, but they never put the sizes there because no one cared. No one cared. It's only when they started putting the, you know, the sizes were there because people wanted certain, you know, bigger and bigger and better. Uh, the interesting thing is 37, year 2000, Paddock went to 37. Then... In the mid-2006, they went up to 39 and a half. And then, thank God, they've actually come down. We're talking world times. The world time came out in 2000. It was 37 mil. Then in 2006, it went up to 39 and a half. Then, a couple years ago, they replaced it with a new model that was 38.5. So, we didn't go back down to 36 mil, but... 38 and a half so it's an interesting journey it is very interesting i'm wearing a paddock philippe this is a calatrava 5296 38 mils and i actually i gotta be honest with you i'm a big guy i find that a little bit too big i think the 37 mil version which i have in the 5127 is a little bit nicer i like the size there's something about the size but uh I got to tell you, seriously, with the size thing there, I think we are not going to go back. Look, Datejust, 36 mil, those days are gone. They're going to be bigger, 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 bigger. Um, and I kind of think myself, myself with these, the size of watches, my general rule is I think I wouldn't go below 37. I think you've got to bite the bull by the horns. And 37 is the smallest I would do. 36, I think, is too small. 37 uh, in a dress watch. In a sports watch, I think the smallest I would do would be 38, 39. I reckon that's the smallest for a sports watch. Uh, which was actually the size 
of my Brega. The Brega, I think, was 39 mils. And the Amiga, first Amiga in space, that's also just under the 40. So I kind of think that could be the sweet spot. The other thing is with size, you know, it's not just the diameter that makes it feel big or small. One thing I found is if the watch is quite thick, it feels smaller. Like this watch here is a 38 mil, but it wears like a 39 or, a, yeah, 39 and a half is what it kind of wears like because it's quite thin. Uh, the other thing is too is the, the length, the length, that length, that size there, because they can do tricky things with the lugs, bigger or smaller lugs to make it feel bigger. Uh, so, you know, there's a couple tricks. So, and the, the last trick is, is the size of the strap. A lot of 33 mil paddocks were 18 mil straps. They're 19 mil straps, 20. This is actually a 21, 21. So there's a couple of factors that decide whether or not it wears big or small. Interestingly enough, the Amiga Speedmaster Men on the Moon, which is a 42 mil, when they made that watch, they used actual trickery to make it feel as small. They wanted it to feel, and I've always thought it was a 40. For a long time, I thought it was a 40, but it's a 42. Because it uses a 20 mil strap or bracelet. It's got special fins in the lugs to make it just channel aerodynamic channeling. You, you know what I mean? So. It's interesting the tricks they can use to make a watch feel smaller or bigger. And it's interesting. My annual calendar, the Paddock, which is a 37 mil, but they were trying to make it a 36 mil and they used a few tricks. They used a 19 mil strap. They used in the concave bezel instead of an ex a bulging bezel. And the length was quite small. So... There's a number of tricks they can use there. Um, I, I think myself, I think 38. I think that's kind of... 37, 38 is the optimum. 39, 40 for sports. That's the way I kind of see it. And uh, I, think, I think this bigness... I think... The funny thing is, I think the big sizes in a lot of brands that went, they may be a very specialty type thing. So I, I think Rolex, the Deep Sea, which was the biggest, meanest diver they ever released, uh, I got a feeling that could be a very special niche. See, the, the Sea Dweller was 40 mil. And the Deep Sea, 44, it was like a Herman Monster sort of diver. And I kind of think, although they then quickly hurried the Sea Dweller 43 mils, and they thinned it down. See, they're very clever how they manipulate aspects of it to make it seem smaller or bigger, depending on what they want to do. And... I got a feeling the, the, the deep sea and the big size could be a very special niche to have there. The biggest, baddest uh, model they released. And I, I mean, let's face it, we're getting bigger. We're eating too much. We're putting on weight. Um, you know, this is the reality that is life. This is, this is how it is. So uh, we're not getting smaller. <laughs> we're not getting smaller, unfortunately. I wish we were, but this is the reality. And it's it's a fascinating tale there. So my own opinion, I think 37 for a dress, 37, 38 for a dress, and for sports, 39, 40 is kind of ideal. I kind of, I'm a bit conservative. I'm a bit conservative. But uh, tell me what you think. What do you think the optimum sizes are? And do you think there's going to be much collectible in these big ones that got out? The big monsters, the big monsters. I think there could be some collectability. So uh, we'll see what the, the market says. I'm Paul Pluto. This has been a paid review on the Archie Luxury Channel, Paul Pluto Channel. Please like, subscribe, and tell your friends. Tell your friends. 
And guys, remember, man cannot survive on Google Ads alone. I depend on these paid reviews to keep me on the tubes. If you do a paid review, I can review your collection. Tell me, tell you what I think, and I will uh, give you my opinion. And uh, it's it's great advice. It's very it's a bespoke video. I tell you what I think, and you know it's all very good. You can share it with your friends. Okay, guys, until next time, ciao. Hi, guys, Archie Luxury. And who do I recommend in America? In America, who do I recommend for quality pre owned wristwatches? David SW, David SW, David SW. Go to davidsw.com. He is the best, the greatest pre owned dealer in all of the United States of America. David SW, David SW, David SW. I want to promote KK Design, which is a San Diego based interior designer who specializes in full service residential and boutique style commercial spaces from start to finish. Reach her and check out her work at www. Dot Kate K dot design. Kate K all the way. I want to introduce a new company. This is Fame City Property Solutions. That's correct. They're located in Northeast Ohio. And Fame City Property Solutions replaces non efficient lights with energy saving LED lighting. Now, I got to tell you, the guys at Fame City. Fame City, they will install energy saving LED lights at office buildings, commercial warehouses, home improvement stores, grocery stores, schools, parking lots, and other residential homes. Now, you can email these guys at Fame City Property Solutions at gmail.com. That's all one word there Fame City Property Solutions at gmail.com.